So I'm presenting on Flow Archive, which is this project that my dad and I have developed. And I'm going to be talking about kind of the aesthetics of a record. And um, I just wanted to throw the website up here at the beginning, flowarchive.com, so that anyone can go and look for more information uh, about the project. Because um, I'm going to try and go through pretty quick the slides, but there's a lot of information, especially about the Hurricane Harvey Peels on the website already. Um, so we are, we created this collaborative um, to consider the intersecting flows of time, sediment, water, and humans, and to use, um, like to, to in collaborate with artists and scientists um, using science tools, specifically a sand peel, to raise communal appreciation of the complexities in our world. Um, namely like the natural world in relation to humans and vice versa and and kind of how do we communicate um, science to non-scientists is kind of a question that we're always kind of grappling with as my background is definitely an art background but I grew up with two geologist parents and so science is very real in my life and um, so this so so it's just something that we're as a collaborative between my dad and I, that's always kind of butting heads, but also trying to get to the core of something that can be communicated. So I'm gonna start by describing what a sand peel is, and it's a geologic science tool developed to capture and archive sediment deposit patterns. It was created as a teaching tool, and that's really how it's been used. Um, but it's also kind of intrinsic to the object that it's for education, which is kind of the root of um, this project. So how would you read a sand peel as a scientist? As a scientist, you bring in all this different data. You have hydrologic data, sedimentary data, flow directions. Um, this image is a chart or a poster created by University of Houston student Sarah Mayer. I think she's a graduate now, and it has all 12 sand peels that we collected from Hurricane Harvey deposits in Buffalo Bayou Park. Um, and uh, these, like, through these interpretations, you can learn about the erosion and deposition of an event like Hurricane Harvey. And this chart or this poster is included in the gather space. Um, this is one specific sand peel, so we can talk about some of the details. So um, these sand peels from this from Hurricane Harvey really show three main events. Um, the flood, which is this yellow line. Uh, the adjustment phase, which is everything in between pretty much. Um, but then at this green line, there was a channel cut that happened when a pool that formed um, started to drain out through this sediment deposit. Um, and, then, and then we have this recovery line, um, which is, when the bulldozers come, um, because this these deposits were in a park, so then the park system decided they needed to deal with the sand and move it. Um, there were six hundred or sixty million pounds of sediment deposited um, in this storm, so there was a lot to move, or they decided there was a lot to move, um, and you can see uh, interpretations of every peel on the website. Uh, this is some of the data that we're using to kind of make these interpretations. And you can see there's some correlation between the lines and the color lines. And then again, on this chart um, with the max flood being that bottom line. So this is the peak of water. And then here's the green line being the channel cut. So you're kind of um, in, it's relating this data within the kind of otherwise more abstract, at least to a non-geologist, um, bed forms. Um, there's also this line of 211 calls, which I'm just going to bring up briefly, but it um, kind of adds a human element into the data um, as the 211 calls are related to people calling for non-emergency services, but still high need services, things like when the flood was happening, where is a safe place to go? If you need to leave your house later, it's things like um, rental, uh, rent assistance, or um, and later even mental health assistance. Um, so there's this interesting correlation that this data shows. 
Um, so then let's step out of that kind of science mind and think about an art object. And one of the powers I think of art is that um, it can promote curiosity and over time the object persists, it lives for a while, hopefully. Um, I mean, maybe not always, but anyway, that's another story. Um, and for me, I think what's interesting about art is that, or what I like to create are things that are kind of strange because I think things that are strange enable, um, they're enticing, they enable conversations and people to look and, and sit with something for a little longer, especially in this current age of information is so fast and so easy. Um, and then like within that, the, the sand pills can hold so many things, kind of going back to the very first presentation or set of presentations today and thinking about complexity. And I think these objects, um, be partly because of their abstraction, like as a as a non-scientist or a non-geologist, um, you can see, you can recognize that there's science, you can see some of the social, geopolitical and historical contexts around, um, in the case of these Harvey sand peels, an event, um, a location and a, um, and, and the kind of context of like what a flooding coastal metropolis means in contemporary world. Um, so, but kind of outside of that or within that, you can also, they're also an indexical archive, kind of like a photograph, like there's a one-to-one. -one. However, like the sand pill is the actual physical material itself, which is really kind of amazing. Um, so it is the earth. There's no real modification. It is how it formed. So it's a real indexical archive of the event. And it's relating to people directly. You get to stand in front of it and feel how big it is. Like these are approximately two feet by four feet, um, or if they're horizontal, four feet by two feet. But anyway, um, the uh, so I think there's something really real about that. Um, and, and then within that, it lets you think about time scales differently. Um, Harvey is a specific event, but there's evidence of kind of the geology of the place of this coastal city. Um, and we're also thinking about it in human scale, um, how, how soon another event like this will happen and, and how do we relate to that as humans living here. Um, so this slide really shows you some of the, the hand, the artist's hand in making, which I think in samples that I've seen previously, you don't um, get a lot of these kinds of edges or um, I think it's trying to really maintain a whole. And I think in some cases we didn't, the sample didn't pull up all the information or there are gaps and we tried to preserve those things like, and the edges are uneven. Um, but really it's kind of the hand of the artist that's visible because um, the artist is like, we had to, they, they couldn't be made without humans. Um, we had to participate to create them, to show them. So I think that's important. Um, so then we created these art objects. So they, you can see that they kind of, we were calling them Sanfield sculptures because they are so physical. Um, and though I guess they could be a relief sculpture, but they come away from the wall. There's this kind of floating frame. So they don't really have a frame. You see the edge themselves. Um, there's also this kind of glow that's designed to kind of emulate the water and where they come from, that they came from this flowing movement. Um, here's uh, a front shot and then there's a detail. Um, here, so you can kind of see the edge and the way that color um, reflection works. Um, so now we're kind of stretching this, okay, so we now have these objects, like how do we reach an audience? How do we communicate about this project, but also um, allow interaction with these objects so that people can kind of feel um, their relationship to the city that they live in and or a city they know of and um, this contemporary context of climate change and life shifting. Um, so 
I want to show this piece because this was a group show. Um, it was actually a call for entries. It's called Seeing Harvey, Personal Stories and Public Responses. This was at Photo Fest International in Houston. And I'm sharing this because the sand peels are different from photographs of the event. And I think their abstraction is part of their power in relation to such an emotional and really tragic human event. Um, and uh, it was really, really great to be included in this exhibition where there were photos of both like professional photographers and uh, people who live in the city. Um, kind of sharing what they saw. And the sand peels are kind of this other set of archive of this event that's not about people's stuff. That's not about, you know, your the, the things that really carry so much emotional attachment and kind of make it hard to reconcile the fact that Houston is a coastal city and these floods are going to happen and they do happen and they will happen again. Harvey is not, is not unique. Um, so here is um, a show that we produced at the Sunset Coffee Building in Buffalo Bayou Park. And what's kind of really great about this show was that we were able to um, hang the sand fields, which wasn't their um, intended mounting, but it worked really well in that people could walk around them and kind of really feel um, what it was, feel their presence, like be with them um, and kind of feel um, Jerry would say like people could behave like a sand grain moving between them and moving um, and we could situate all the peels in relation to how they came from the sandbar uh, and right out here right outside is the bayou so it was also in relation to the actual body water that created these peels um, and then along with the sand peels in this exhibition we had these watermarked lines the tape so this is the channel cut again and the high water mark. And this person is five foot seven. So representing kind of an average person to kind of give scale, human scale in relation to the peels also. Um, and uh, along with this show, we also included a booklet that you could essentially walk around with and look at each peel for an interpretation. Um, as you move through the space and the colors in this on the wall um, were repeated in the booklet. There's also a map and there was a video. Um, and I think uh, the show was really well received that we kind of consider this the art context. Um, and then in 2019, we created Flood Adjust Recover Flow Archives from Hurricane Harvey as the special exhibit for the 2019 Geo Golf Convention. And um, again, the sand peels were hanging, so we were able to kind of situate them in relation to where they were actually, um, well, in relation to each other. Um, this show also included a high watermark and a um, channel cut watermark and a woman for scale. Um, we also had posters that were generated or created by the University of Houston um, geology students uh, that talked about different parts of the storm system or things that were related to the storm system, whether it was the interpretations of the peels that we saw a few slides ago or kind of downstream what happened and upstream what was happening. Um, another kind of addition for this exhibition was the was the carpet arrows, um, which kind of reiterated the flow directions and kind of the complexity of flow directions. I think as a non-geologist trying to interpret these um, peels, it, it kind of adds to the layering of kind of the poetics of trying to understand what's going on, but also kind of recognizing complexity. Um, so these two shows also included um, some field trips or walks. Uh, we kind of did a demonstration at the first show and built that out into this field guide, which is available on the website. And it has, um, it, we, we had different stops along the bayou that kind of talked about these various levels of the science and the, um, 
kind of the human impact, all kind of all of these levels throughout that was actually like space without within the park to kind of talk about what happened and how these sand peels were created and, and then kind of also introducing them as an art object. Um, and then now these this field guide still exists on the website and you can, we've installed QR code stickers around the park at each of the stops so that anyone could go and snap a picture and kind of learn about this site in the context of the of Harvey event and the sand peels. Um, and also the Buffalo Bayou Partnership has a link on their website as like a self-guided tour as well. So it's, mm, so then from there, um, these are the publications just to give you some visuals. We've got um, two science publications and then this is the book that we created for the very first kind of art show. And um, to go back just a little bit, I wanna say that something that happened that was really interesting in the art versus the science exhibitions, if you will kind of polarize them that way. But um, at the, art show, people were, you know, really looking at the peels. And however, at the science show, the scientists first went to the charts. They didn't go to the objects as much. And that was kind of really an interesting um, find and experience. And we'll see, hopefully there will be another iteration and we'll see how that plays out in the next exhibition. Um, so I want to talk about collaboration was kind of key to creating this project and also generating the next exhibit. Um, the science journals helped lead to us participating in GeoGolf. Um, working with the University of Houston students was really great. Uh, working with the Buffalo Bayou Partnership. Also, um, yeah, they really just supported the project, which has been really great to kind of have this community um, to engage with. Uh, and then so really briefly, I'm going to talk about our next project or our project in progress, um, which is the Rio Grande River system. And I'm currently based in Santa Fe, and we've been working collecting sand peels along the, the upper part of the system. Um, this is just a map to kind of show you the scale, like this is Houston, and then this whole stretch is the Rio Grande, and we've only hit this top section. So it's a really different project, but it's really kind of exciting. I mean, the Houston project is really amazing in that it's a geologic event that happened that you can um, pinpoint in time, like in human time, and, uh, and really, kind of try to understand the relation of um, and the significance of like the science of geology in relation to a coastal city like Houston. And whereas the Rio Grande is really going to be stretchy because it's about so many different sites that have so many different narratives. Um, so the, I'm just going to quickly run through a couple pictures of these slot, um, new sand peels. These are at um, the top of the system at Stony Pass. This one is at Buckman, um, which is kind of related to like water projects in the West and how humans like move water around for our own needs. Um, and then this one is out for, of Laney, which is um, on the rail line that connected or still does connect Chicago to Los Angeles. So there's kind of the flow of people that's involved here. Um, and then this is the this is a website. So please go check it out to learn more. 